Captain and Tangela too. And our host, Vincent Van Gogh. Can he bring it to ya? Creature features and all creatures. What's up with that one? She thought hula hooping during the commencement would be in the spirit of tonight's film. Uh, of course. Our film tonight is Zombies of Moratau. But does she not know that hula hooping has nothing to do with traditional Hawaiian hula dance? Apparently not. I also attempted to explain that Moratau has nothing to do with the Hawaiian Islands, but is instead a fictional location on the coast of Africa. She refuted these facts by accusing me of being a total butthead. She has a way with words. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The lovely little Compra Mario in the background would be my charming housemate, Tangella. And the sullen bloke to this side would be my worldly and sophisticated butler, Mr. Livingston, who unfortunately happens to be easily off-put by puerile insults delivered by ill-mannered debutantes. But enough about them, because we do so have a most fantastical program in store for you tonight. As previously alluded, we shall tonight present Zombies of Moratau from 1957. This is a rather nicely done film, which we've never shown prior. Most impressive in the cast is Marjorie Eaton as Grandmama Peters, an impressive actress that actually later portrayed the Emperor in The Empire Strikes Back. It's true, mate. Look it up for yourself. Miss Eaton was actually born here in the Bay Area in Oakland, California, and was a skilled painter. But enough about her and the film. Let's talk about our guest, shall we? For joining us tonight will be the hugely talented and hilariously amusing actor, John Capellis. He's been in too many productions to name in this short commencement, but you'll likely remember him best for his John Hughes days as Carl the Janitor in The Breakfast Club, Dino in Weird Science, and Rudy the Oily Bohunk in 16 Candles. John will tell us about those and many other roles he's done over his long career, tell us what he's up to next, and give us his take on tonight's film. So don't go away, because it shall be another night of monochrome zombie fright, right here on Creature Features. Isn't it about time for this one to leave the nest? Nonsense. She's still my muse, and I would rather miss the pitter patter of her little boots running around the mansion. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be a wonderful night tonight. You know why? Because we've got John Capellos. You know, I, I, I'm confused about how to say your name. You said Capellos, mm -hmm. and I said Capellos. Oh, Capilaus or Capalaus. Capilaus. I like or that one. Capulus. Capulus. Um, you can say it any number of ways. I say Capilaus. Capilaus. Mm -hmm. It's like a cape that was lost. They used to say in high school, crap a lot. No, they would not say that to you. Yes, they would, Well, if they could only see you now, right? Yes, and they try to. He's done everything. No, every single movie you've ever seen, besides things that were done like in the 40s, well, he yeah. has been in. I've done uh, industrial films. Industrial films, yes, those I are did. great. 
I did a film how to screw in a light bulb. <laughs> no, that, that would not require three people to film though, right? No, One no, would help. No. One would help. So thank you so much for coming up. How was the trip up? It was wonderful. It Smooth was great. Smooth fly. It was wonderful. It was nice. Yeah, and it, you didn't get attacked by any birds? No, 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 nobody attacked me. No birds, no uh, flight attendants, nobody. He was telling me during the break that he knew Suzanne Pluchette. I did. Who was, who was in the birds, and she was eaten by birds, right? Yeah, she was eaten by birds, and she's, uh, she was a fantastic individual. I really, really liked Suzanne. She was mm -hmm. a great person. She swore like a truck driver. Oh, we love truck drivers, especially yeah. the swearing part. Anyways, we're going to watch this movie tonight, Zombies of Mora Tau, and I know for a fact you have not seen it. No, I have not. It was made in 1957, the year after I was right. born. Right, right. So you could have seen it. Now, you were born in Canada, right? Yep, Kenyatta. So would they show American spooky movies up there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I grew up, by, my mother was an American, and she would cool. make me watch American movies. Oh, it's just so you could, like, fix the accent. Right. Yeah. Well, she would uh, yeah, indoctrinate me with her. So American you would say films. about instead of about. Yeah, she would. She would. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. My mother was from Boston. So she would say oh, have Boston. cornflakes and we would corn say they're cornflakes, mother. Oh, I love Boston yeah. accents. Park yeah. the car in Harvard Yard. Yeah. Park the car in Harvard right. Yard. Scully right. Square, Georgie and Johnny and all that oh, sort of stuff. You're good at this. Yeah, she well, was of very... course, he's an actor. He would be good at this. All right. Let's say we start the film and we come back. I'm going to talk to you about everything. All Columbia right? Pictures, right? Harry Cohn. Columbia Pictures. pictures right? Wide and screen. Yes. No, it's going to be nice. You're going to enjoy it. Off we go. Zombies of Mora Tau. See you on the other side of the break. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you're just joining us, you're somewhat rather tardy, but it's all right. We'll forgive him this time, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, we are with John Capellas, and uh, we are watching Zombies of Moratel quickly on this movie. Zombies, you just ran him over. Yeah, man. I'd like, I like to that. see a few agents get run over like that. No, <laughs> that's that's true. But you, they should put up one of those signs like they have like in San Diego that show zombies running across the road. Zombies, Exactly, yeah. right. No, no, no. To warn you that you might stumble well, upon some zombies. It's horrible to see zombies treated like that. That wouldn't happen today. Right. That no, would not no. They have, they have like, uh, they have people, like advocates. Yeah. You know. Well, zombies, you know, should, should, you know. And the zombie law. Well, you know, I think that zombies really uh, should have a lobby. They should have a zombie lobby. Right, right. Uh, yeah. It's it's a different time. You know, back then, zombies really were not protected. It's not. And it's, uh, they were really maltreated. But things are different. Things are better now, right? Well, we're we're you, enlightened. You would like to think so. Speaking of which, I want to talk about things you've done. He's been in everything. I've already established that. Yeah. The Shape of Water. We're yeah. going to talk about that later. But um, you did, like... Almost every single John Hughes film. Well, seems. not really. I only did I only did uh, three, and Breakfast I was Breakfast Club, uh, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, Weird and Science. Um, Sixteen Candles. Right, right. So, John Hughes, how did you meet him? Um, I auditioned for Sixteen Candles uh, in nineteen whatever eighty something or other, and I, we met. And uh, he was from suburban Detroit, and I was from suburban. One in Ontario, we sort of got along, right. Some, similar. And those two are close, right? Somewhat, Somewhat, two and a half hours away. We really right. got along. We right. really got along. And John was a smart, clever guy. And I like to think that maybe I had similar qualities at the time. And that was a big role. I mean, you're all over that film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, Rudy Rizchek was my name. Right. And then the fiance. Mm -hmm. She's what, what's wrong with her? She took a pill and she took some sort of muscle relaxant. Right. And, uh, and you're carrying her through yeah, the whole yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, her mother was a very famous actress in her day. Her mother was Carol Baker, uh, the sex know. bomb. Uh, oh, really? She was in uh, Baby Doll, with, um, which was an Leah Kazan movie oh, in the wow. late 50s. I don't know if we we're talking about quality movies now, but, right, right. Uh, but uh, Blanche Baker was uh, my wife's name in 16 Candles. How wonderful. And, uh, but that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun to shoot. A lot of great actors in that sequence, too. And Max so that's the one you did first. Yeah, so that Breakfast was Club first. came next? 
Um, 16 Candles and then Breakfast Club. Breakfast yep. Club. And you were Carl. Carl. The it shut that a couple of years, maybe a year and a half later. Um, yep. Yeah. How wonderful. wonderful. And then we did uh, a brrr, Weird Science and then I did Ferris Bueller. I want to Bueller, talk about Weird Science. And then I got excised, cut out of We had one of the stars from Weird Science right in that chair you're sitting in. Who was that? I'm going to tell you when we come back. We gotta get back to the film though, right? Yeah, let's get back to this. Film. Let's get back to Zombies of Moratau. And when we come back, we're gonna get more great stories from John Capellos. Don't go away, please. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. Mr. Capella's had to step away for a moment. You know, I think he had to take a call from his agent. He got another offer of some kind. He's a busy man. No, he's a he's a he's a well-paid thespian, I believe. Well said. Yeah, no, he's, he's talented too. Anyways, it's time for us to do that thing, letters, because you sent us letters and stuff, and we have to do them, right? Right. What do we got, Mr. Livingston? Something from Carmel, California. Carmel, California. How are you, Tangela? Good. She, she did a pretty good job with the uh, hula hoop thing demonstration. It's not Hawaiian, but... It's not appropriate, but... Why but, was but it not well, appropriate? But well hula. No, she's... she's She's inspiring people to do physical activity, which is good. I can use a bit of it myself. All right, this letter is from Tim Blomgren. That name sounds familiar. He's from Carmel by the Sea. You know this place? Yes. And he goes, uh, Dear Vincent, Mr. Livingston, and Tangela, hello again from Carmel by the Sea, not Volcano. Thank you for clarifying. So he did write to us before, because he knows. So I get confused with the two. There's Carmel by the Sea and Carmel by the Volcano, and I, I don't like the Carmel by the Volcano. It's itchy. Ah. I don't know. Uh, the sulfur or something. I enjoyed viewing the House That Would Not Die movie. However, I originally thought it would be a documentary about my neighbor's crazy remodeling job, which was far scarier than anything Barbara Stanwyck's daughter could dish out. Which, you know, could be right. Because you know, anytime you live next to a restoration of that kind, there's lots of noise. Yes. I could not handle this. I need to clarify a couple of things about Carmel. Although the Hog's Breath restaurant is still in business, Clint Eastwood no longer owns it. He does, however, still live in the area. I know where, but it is a local secret. Plus, I'm worried that Tangela might find out and make a trip down there, and nobody wants that. You wouldn't cause any harm, Clint Eastwood, would you? You know, our, our prior guest, uh, Pamela Ferdin, she was the first person on in a movie to kill Clint Eastwood. Really? Yeah, in The Beguiled, she killed him. It was the first time in a movie he'd been killed. Imagine that. So you'd have to worry about Pamela and not Tangela. At any rate, here is some dough to help with Andrew's medical bills. Could I have an autographed picture of you guys? And he sent us a check for 50 American dollars. That's a lot for a bloody photo, but yes, of course, we'll send you an autographed photo, I assume, to this address. Yes, to this address. And, uh, you know, we don't sell those autographed photos, do we? Not really. When we, when we do a show, sometimes we'll sell the photo and we aut autograph for free, right? Yes. But uh, we don't sell the photo. So if you want to send us a contribution of any reasonable size, something that's not insulting, right? If they send me a check for five cents, I will be insulted and I will send them back their check and I will give their address to Tangela to send another gift as well. But if you send something reasonable, we'll send you an autograph photo. How's that for an offer? Sounds reasonable. Yes, quite reasonable. Thanks for uh, sending this to us, Tim, and uh, we will uh, see you soon in your mailbox. Next, Mr. Livingston. Looks like an email. Indeed. And this one is from Uncle Mikey, and he spells it with four E's after the mic. 
And he goes, subject, Coffee 20 drops Creature Features. Being one of the original followers of Creature Features from its start in Sacramento launch through KTVU and Bob Wilkins through John Stanley and now the reinstatement of the new Creature Features, it seems to me that Coffee 20 is being quite obtuse when they think they have better programming for 10 p.m. at night. I grew up with Westerns in the 60s, but to replace Creature Features with Westerns is ridiculous. All around the country, there are stations picking up Creature Features along with YouTube and all the other sources for watching Creature Features. So now that James Gabbett is no longer with Coffee TV 20 and Coffee 20 wants to abandon Creature Features, I will be abandoning Coffee 20 entirely. There's no sense or reason to tune into Coffee 20 anymore when it's run by Brontosaurus Brain Power. All right, so uh, Uncle Mikey, I need to explain a few things for you here. Coffee is gone. So coffee rode off into the sunset and became Grit TV. So, you know, you, everybody has stopped watching coffee because coffee no longer exists. And that's why we're not on that station anymore. However, um, that only represented maybe 5 10% of all viewers, right? Yes. And the rest are all over the world on YouTube and Vimeo and all this and all the other stations we do. We're on 40 other stations. 45. So... You know, losing coffee was sad, but it's not that big of a deal. So don't be too mad. Tune into YouTube. Picture looks better anyways, right? Better yes. quality. Better quality. Right. High Last resolution. But not least. We have a package. A package. Oh, it looks like one of these gift boxes, which it is. So I shall take out the letter, if I can find it, and give the rest to Miss Tangella. Oh, this is a handwritten note, but it looks like it was written well. Did you pre-screen this? Is there yeah. any bad words in this? None that I could ascertain. All right. So uh, this is from Russell Ledwell in Morgan Hill, California. I think it was a hill owned by Morgan at one time. That's why. Perhaps. I could be wrong. Hello to the gang of Creature Features, Vincent Livingston, Tangela, and everyone behind the scenes that make the show so fun. I've been a fan since the 70s. I catch your show on every Saturday. It's run on cable TV channel 20. What is this? I'm confused. The other, the other bloke just said it's not on 20, and now this one's saying it is on 20. There are 20s on various cables. Oh, is that what it is? So there's like 20 20s, maybe. Well, it could be 20 on the, in a different area. Where is he from? He's right. He's right. Morgan Hill. So I don't know. The set is cool. Set and cast again. There he goes. And uh, the mansion is scary all by itself. I find that you're a good host. Livingston helps keep the flow of the show going. And Tangella is a fun little nymph. I've never heard you called that before. I have not missed a show, but I am tired of the same reruns of bad movies. How a decent one at least once a month? I have included gifts for you all. Let's see some of these gifts. Maybe you can sign them and auction them off on air or your website. Now, I don't like auctioning things. It's, it's strange. Oh, those look like my gloves. Those are your gloves. No, those are not my gloves. Show me. They are now. No, no. These are made from vinyl. Mine are made from actual cow leather. And they're longer. Naga hide. Naga, they, that's mm. naga hide. So mm. two pairs of that. What else? Mr. Livingston, a thing. What else? I need to see what he said before I think. Oh, you like those. She loves those. All right. Uh, this could bring in some decent money for decent in-color movies. You know, we've run some good movies. I, I don't know what you're talking about. We've, like, like the one we're running tonight, Mortal is, is a good film. It is a good it's, film. It's not color. Good quality film. It's a good quality film, but it's not color. But uh, we ran a good color one recently, right? Yes. The, the, the Whatever Happened to Aunt Alice. That was a good one, right? That was very good, actually. And then we did uh, the one with Pamlin, with the, the, the daughter of the mine. That was color. So maybe you need to check your glasses, sir. Uh, he continues, uh, I promise I'll keep watching and keep up the good work. Cheers, Russell Ledwell. P.S. Morgan Hill is north of Gilroy Garlic Festival or south of San Jose. That's a nice area. I know exactly where it is now. You have to drive by Morgan Hill to go to Gilroy Gardens. You've been to Gilroy Gardens, right, Tom? It's a beautiful place. It's the nicest amusement park I've ever been to, and I've been to Disneyland Paris. And else, what did, what did Livingston get? Thank you. What is it? The mystery. It looks like button covers. Button covers? More button covers. What, oh, 
Yin and Yang button oh, colors. Oh, look at that. That's very nice. Yeah, he, likes, he likes stuff That's like very it. thoughtful. Thank you. It is. It is. See? He likes you already. All right. Is that it? That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send us an email, send it to the address you see appearing over here. Or if you'd like to send a package full of wonderful gifts that make Mr. Livingston smile, send it to the address you see right here. We'll be back soon with Mr. John Capellas, but first let's get back to Zombies of Moratau. Who does your hair, John? Uh, my wife. She does a good, better job than my wife does. Because I don't have a wife. Maybe I should get a wife. I should get married and then I have good hair again. Well. Right? <laughs> Welcome back to the show. If you just joined us, we're with John Capelos. That's right. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> I should have spelt your name with a C. Then well, I say K's care. are funnier. K's are funnier. They are. So, uh, and we are watching uh, Zombies of Mora Tau. So, uh, Grandmama... Mm -hmm. in this movie you saw her she looks like uh, she looks like the wicked witch of the west oh somewhat. she does yeah, yeah right yeah. right kind of old she was only like in her early 50s when she did that yeah really oh, yeah she looks yeah, a little bit yeah. older i and i don't think it was makeup i think mm -hmm. she just had one of those faces that you know, i bet she was a, an old looking baby oh yeah she's a, but she ended up being uh the emperor in Empire Strikes Back. Really? Yeah. No, wow. they, they stuck the thing on her head, and then they re her voice with a man's voice. Wow. Well, yeah. that, that's a long career, though. I just learned this today. Wow. And she's from here. She's from what, this area? Palo Alto. She was born in Oakland and died in Palo Alto. Oh, so mm. she didn't have a long way to go. I huh. suppose not. You know, if, if she'd been alive, well, we did the show, I would have had her on as a guest. Not tonight, because I have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. He's done more stuff. So Way her name was stuff. Eaton, right? And she married a guy named Hogg, so she became Eaton Hogg. Oh, I, you know, I like that. That's an old Spinal Tap That's the way they do joke. American names around here. <laughs> no, no, they, they make them clever. I like that. All right, so uh, on this movie, um, not much is happening, but it will happen soon, and we'll get back to that soon. I want to talk about you and that Please. movie Weird Science. Yes. You were in Weird Science. You had, I was. You were in one of the best parts of Weird Science. Yeah, probably. Probably the funniest scene in the entire film was mm. that bar scene. Yeah, it was a fun scene to shoot. Right, a lot of right. guys in that one. Right. A lot of guys. Right. Now, the, the main woman, what was her name? Kelly LeBrock? Kelly LeBrock, What yeah. was she like? Oh, well, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people liked her. She was going out with a guy named Victor Dre at the time. That sounds devious. Yeah, Victor I Dre mean. owns a big place in Vegas called Dre's, right? And right. He was a very famous sort of um, type of guy. Uh -oh. And uh, she was the object of a lot of people's fascination. My goodness. She's a very beautiful, beautiful woman. Nice yeah. lady. She's British as well, right? She is. Right, she is. Right, yep. And, yeah. uh, God, a lot of people liked her. A lot oh, of people yeah. liked her. And, well, she uh, didn't do much after that, did she? No, I think that she was kind of uh, protected, uh, you know, and coddled by her husband and oh. um, sort of not not really. Right. Uh, I don't think she was interested in, in being in show business. She much. was so good. Yeah. yeah. She was so good. But you continued. You've mm -hmm. not stopped working. No, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. That's I have awesome. To. Plus, you know, I'm in debt to the mob, so you know, I have that, to work. Well, not nothing to do with Kelly LeBrock, though. No, right? no, no. no course, just no. A, I'm not. in, you know, for fifty grand large every week. I have to right. pay them. <laughs> well, it's that gambling habit, right? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. It's better than other habits. Yeah, yeah. Well, me and Phil Mickelson. <laughs> so you were in The Shape of Water. Yes. And did you like the film? When you went and saw I it, did you love like the finish? I the movie. You know, it's it's very rare that you are in a movie that you love. Like, you know, I could have been in this zombie movie, but uh, <laughs> I would have you been. You wouldn't have loved it. No, I wouldn't no, have loved it. But no. it's really great to be in a movie that you love. And uh, Guillermo del Toro is one of the most fantastic people right. to work with. He is oh, yes. adorable. And he is uh, an artist. Right. He is truly the Fellini. Uh, he does everything, right? Yeah, he's he's really a genius. Right, right. 
Amazing. Truly, truly Amazing. a genius. All right, speaking of genius, let's get back to this film. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to find out some about some of these other things you've done. Uh, I didn't know that zombies were afraid of fire. You know, that's a new thing. I always thought it was Frankenstein. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Yeah. All right, off we go. See you on the other side of the break. Hello, this is Pete from Newcastle, Virginia. Love the show, been watching for years now, and you guys do such an incredible job and show such great movies that I haven't seen before. The Oblong Box is fantastic. Thank you and keep up the good work. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You know, I don't believe it either. But Walking on the bottom of the ocean, that zombie is amazing. But it makes sense because he's dead. He doesn't need to breathe, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, zombies, back in the day, those zombies could do anything. I thought, you know, since they burn, you'd think they'd float. Yeah, well, what? you know. I, I think they have special shoes. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, this yeah, is before Nike, special. too. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the big Nikes that make the ones that... Tom Cruise used. Oh, yeah, well, Tom they, Cruise. They make him yeah. tall. I rest my case. Right, right. Yeah, now, yeah. he's a short man. Yeah, in a lot of he's ways. Really short. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the show. We are watching Zombies of Moritau with our friend John Capellos. Capellos? Whatever. You know, I'm going to get it right. The very last segment, I shall get it right. But uh, we were talking during the break. You said you were on an episode of Seinfeld. I was. I, I like Seinfeld. I did, too. That was fun. And so what did you do? What did you portray? I played his sniffing accountant, Barry oh Prophet. Oh, and he had some type of allergy, right? Well, they thought maybe he was doing a little bit of what they call the, oh, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Mexican Snuff. or the Colombian jumping bean juice. Oh, right, right. But... Then they thought maybe he was allergic to a sweater. Oh, that could do it. And they thought maybe mm -hmm. he was doing the other stuff, and they didn't really know. Right. So the you cold. have to watch the episode if you haven't seen right, it. Right, right. So that was fun doing that. And that was shot in L.A., right? Yeah, it was shot, well, wherever L.A. is. Right, yeah, right. I think it's that way. Right, right. Yeah, it was shot in L.A. And uh, many, many years ago, I had long hair at that point, and I... Oh, nice. Yeah, I had hair. Right, At that right. moment. And it was fun. It was fun. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, Three of the cast members were really nice to me. And the fourth. Yeah, there was one that was kind of marginal. Right, right. right. I won't say his name, George but you Costanza. Could... <laughs> oh, him? No. That was not going to be the one I would guess. No, no, I was just joking. I bet, no, I bet in reality he's a nice guy, but he's under pressure under the Well, lights. they were all under pressure, but I have to say, Michael Richards was one of the funniest, funniest effing guys I've ever worked with. Oh, for sure. He does this thing <laughs> in this episode where he drinks a beer with a cigarette in his mouth, and then he gets hit with a, a, a bar, a, a piece of a bar, you know, that opens up, right, boom, hits right. his head. It's a, one of the funniest bits I've ever had to be, and I had to keep a straight face through the whole thing. If people know this episode, it's... Right. it's How many takes? One take, because... One take? Um, um, uh, what's his name uh, came up to me. What, what is his name? Oh, right, right. He's got his own show. Yeah, he's got his own show. Right. And he came up to me, he says, John, you cannot ruin this take, because you never know what he's going to do. So right. um, he was so funny. So, so you just had to keep a straight face. And, well, actually, uh, I bit the inside of my cheek, and at the end of the evening, I had to went home and looked at my cheek. It was bleeding. Because but um, he is so funny. Larry David told me, do right. not laugh. Right. Do not laugh. Right. And he's a nice guy, I bet. Larry is very intense. Right. They're all really, really nice, except right. for, you know, the one that, cast member. That, that one guy. Yeah. There's always that one guy. Isn't no, there? I'm just joking. Isn't there? Umbrella Academy. Yes. You did that. I did. And you played... I played Jack Ruby. Jack yeah. Ruby. Yeah, yeah. 
My goodness. That was fun. That was, I did the second season of The Umbrella Academy. Wow. And it was kind of a fictive take on Jack Ruby. Right. Um, and uh, the sort of, they do this sort of history mashup. And I played Jack Ruby um, back in 1960-whatever. Right. And that was a really intense, fun thing to do. And they recreated the entire scene. Uh, well, they the sort palace. of do a bit of a recreation of that time period, yes. Oh, but that's um, incredible. really, really great show and um, really neat character to play, although um, not entirely historically accurate because they sort of um, use it, as I said, as sort right. of a historical mashup. Right, right. But a great it's show. It's a great show. Well, that's, that's what Tarantino does with all his films, right? Who? He changes history. A Tarantino, Tarantino bloke. Or maybe, heard of maybe him. you know, he would redo Zombies of Moratau. Oh God, so what he could do with this movie? Right, right. I All mean. right, let's let's find out what happens, eh? Yeah. Off we go back to Zombies of Moratau, and when we come back, uh, John's going to tell us another story about something more interesting than this film. Promise. Yes. See you soon. <laughs> Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Welcome back to Creature Features. It's Zombie Night, and it's John Capelos. Very night. good. John Capelos Night, and uh, zombie time. How did they turn her into a zombie? They are not following zombie science. Oh, they they, they, they a, did something to her. They did something to her. You know, they make it look like it was like a potion, or they talked her into being a zombie. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. They tricked her. They tricked her. All right. But there was no zombies in the relic, were there? No, no. Mm. There were sort of a few zombies off camera in the relic, but that's another right, story. Right, right. The, I think the director was a zombie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Peter so, Himes. How was that filming that film? Well, I mean, there were, there, there were a couple of incredible actors to work with. There was uh, an actress, a very, um, I'm forgetting her name, but she worked on a lot of, um, um, of uh, John Ford movies. Right. And she was really wonderful. And uh, it was an experience working in that movie. Um, we got a lot, we got wet a right. lot. There right. was a lot of, uh, and then we were working with a Stan Winston monster. Oh, he's the best. And uh, that was kind of interesting. Right. And... Uh, uh, working with Tom Sizemore, which was interesting, and uh, yeah, he was on the show. Oh, really? He sat oh, right there, that yeah. same chair, yeah, well, not long ago. Yeah, he was a, he was kind of a monster in his own right. Yeah, he's interesting. And um, there was kind of a, uh, a synergy between uh, the uh, the cast members in that film. Now, where did you shoot this? We shot uh, in Chicago, uh, the right. Relic, and we right. also shot on the soundstage at Paramount. So you you've done a lot of stuff in Chicago. It's like Hollywood number two for a well, while there, right? Yeah, I think my first movies in Chicago were Breakfast Club and right. Sixteen Candles. Right. And I also shot um, 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 uh, Head Office was in, no, that was in Toronto. Where's your favorite place to film? Um, Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa? Yeah. That's a nice, it's close to here. 
You know, Hitchcock used to love Santa Rosa. Really? Yeah. Really? No. Hitch. I, I, yeah, I loved working with Hitch. That's I how mean, anywhere to work is good, you know. I've, I've shot everywhere. Anywhere but that what's the most exotic place you've been sent? I've shot a film. I shot a, a mimic sentinel in Romania. Romania. Yeah, yeah, that was My a fun goodness. place where they, sh you know, they would put a big radio mic and so this right. is this is a Russian radio mic. We put right, it here. Right. It's portable. And I right. said, no, 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 this is not portable radio mic. How and, fun. Yeah, but shooting in Romania, I've shot in Spain, which was like nice. shot in Cadiz, Spain, and I shot in uh, Mallorca and Madrid with Raul Julia. I did a movie oh, nice. um, about Onassis. Um, I've shot in... Uh, Oh, I've shot in Manitoba, I've shot in Alberta, I've shot in Newfoundland, I've shot in Florida. It's a great way to see the world, is it yeah, not? I've shot in every Canadian province except right. for Quebec. Um, how about, how about uh, Halifax? I've shot in Halifax. Halifax. I shot The River King with Ed Burns oh, nice. in, in, in Halifax. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to move there. I thought, if I ever move away from America, I would go. Oh, Halifax, Halifax is a wonderful place. Yeah, yeah, the amazing. arm. You know, speaking of Canadians, many of our viewers are Canadian. We, Good. We get, no, the bulk of the mail we get sometimes is, is from Well, you know Canadians. how you spell Canada, right? How? C-A-N-A-D-A. -A -A. That's a good way to do it. All right, what do you say we wrap up this film? Let's go. All right, we're going to wrap up this film, and then uh, when we come back, we're going to find out what you're doing next, right? Yeah. Right? All right. Off we go. Zombies and more Tau. Don't go away, because it's going to be fun. This brief moment of tranquility has been brought to you by Nightscape. Relax and sleep better every single night with this and other videos from our free YouTube channel. Learn more by visiting nightscape.co today. And so ends Zombies of Moratel. That was too easy. Yeah, well, those guys turned out to be good guys at the end, right? Oh, my God. But, you, you know, that's the way you get rid of zombies in 1957. I think what it was, was you could not shoot zombies in the head in 1957 because yeah. of the, the TV laws. Yeah, well, you know, but right. that's the way you did it in those days. Right. No, but you've never acted as a zombie, have you? Is this a trick question? No, no, it is a no. It's a, an amazing question because if you have not been a zombie, I'm going to ask if you've been the person who shoots a zombie. Never really nailed that part. No. It's very, very difficult. And right. Hollywood these days, you know, there's a lot of ageism. I'm over a certain age now, and you know, they're really giving those parts a little lot younger. I you could know, see you portraying sort of the, the Benedict Cumberbatches of the world are getting those parts. No, no, I can see you portraying a a person who's been hunting zombies for a long time, and you teach younger people how to do it. Right, let, let me let me give it a shot right now. That's it. No, yeah. it's confidence. That's that's how you kill zombies. You need confidence. That's you need that more than a gun. Yeah, right? I right? feel it. I that's feel true. it. Yeah. That's true. All right. It's uh -huh. been ridiculous, but I love it. Yeah. What are you doing next, John? Well, um, I'm going to EDD. Going to fill EDD? out a few forms at uh, unemployment development. At, at, a busy actor like you, I, I don't. I yeah, don't. and then I'm going to go to Walmart and fill out a, you know, maybe get a job at Walmart. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm um, sure there's more roles for you. Perhaps this zombie. Maybe to roll a target. You know, is it? Uh, you know, they've. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. A couple, couple places, maybe. No, I actually, uh, um, I got a, a show that I called Mayor of Koreatown that I'm developing right now. Oh, you are. And hopefully we're going to get that up and running. Nice. That was, that was acting, folks, about the Walmart. He's thing. good. <laughs> no, he's he's very good. He had me fooled for a and, moment. And uh, maybe a job at Penguins Yogurt, um, and a few other things we're developing. We, 
the royal we. So are you going to be strictly behind camera on this, or are you going to be in front No, as the well? mayor of Koreatown is something that I'm um, writing with a couple of other people and that hopefully will get up and I'll be acting in as well right, as some. Um, right, Wonderful. Directing and writing. As you should be. Right. I understand Suffering. you do some music work as well. I do. Right. I have an album called Too Hip for the Room that's currently out on room. Spotify. And what's your acts? My acts? Right. Yes, I play the guitar. The I guitar? play a nice. bit of piano and Very I nice. sing. Mm -hmm. Three axes? Three axes, no waiting. Three, three axis person. That, that mm. makes you three dimensional, which is yes. good. All right. Well, I I'm the axis. I want to thank you for coming oh, on the show and you. watching the movie with us. Thank and you. Uh, next time you're in town, yes. you must pop in and say hello again. I shall and will. And uh, we will uh, we will find out what you're doing next. Yes, yes, yes. But as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching the show tonight. We know you could have been watching like the Farm Report or something like that mm. news. They watch, you know, if they don't watch us, they watch the news, and they know the news is bad, so they watch it, us because they get good news, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. We will see you next week. Different guests, different movie. I don't know who, but it will be fun. So don't go away, and don't forget, we love you. So, uh, John. Yes. You know, Kelly LeProc. What? You know, we, we've been trying to get her on our program and we haven't been able to find her. Maybe maybe you could give us give us some help with that. Are you kidding? She wouldn't come on your program. With you looking like that?